it was on a Falcon 9 launch vehicle, a fairly standard way of getting things into space these days. But the spacecraft itself, whose name is DART, an acronym for Double Asteroid Redirection Test, uh, that is basically the size of a large fridge, weighs about 600 kilograms, and its target is the moon of an asteroid, a little world by the name of Dimorphos, which orbits an asteroid called Didymos. Uh, and the idea is to check whether we can change the orbit of Dimorphos. OK, so it's going to take, what, about 10 months for starters yeah. before it even reaches that point. Why do we want to change this co the course? So um, one day uh, it's likely that we will face the reality of an object the size of Dimorphos, uh, which is around about 160 metres or so, uh, heading for Earth, uh, maybe, you know, with a potential impact some time down the track. And what we're going to need to be able to do under such, uh, su such circumstances is reliably change the trajectory of the incoming object. So the experiment that we're talking about now is 100% safe because Didymos and Dimorphos are way out in the, in the main asteroid belt. They will never hit the Earth. Um, and the idea is to see what it takes to actually give enough oomph to an asteroid by clouting it with something relatively heavy, uh, what it would take actually to change the orbit. And the, the way this is being done, it's very cleverly constructed because the best way to see whether you have actually succeeded is to have an object that's in orbit around something else. And in this case, it's the big asteroid uh, Didymos. Oh, that's interesting. So that's how you will be able to know whether you have managed to knock it off course, because it'll be r rotating a little at a little bit of a different um, point or place. It, that's right. In fact, what, what is expected to happen is that the orbit of Dimorphos around Didymos will be 10 minutes shorter after the impact than it was before. And that's something that can be easily measured, even from Earth, uh, using Earth-based telescopes. So it's a great way of doing this test, finding out exactly what happens in a real-world situation where you try and nudge an asteroid. Tell me, though, how have they calculated whether this 300-kilogram DART spacecraft will be enough of an impact? So um, that calculation is based on known physics. It's pretty well established. In fact, you learn this sort of thing at school, uh, how, how hard you've got to hit something to move it or to accelerate it. <laughs> yeah. But there's a big unknown in this. Um, it's all very well just saying, well, if you hit it uh, this hard with an object of this mass, it will move by that much. Uh, the big unknown is that when you do impact an object like the uh, little asteroid Dimorphos, um, it's not just the, the sort of physical thump of the impactor. Uh, you get an explosion created by the amount of energy that's being trans transferred to the asteroid itself. There's an explosion which behaves rather like a rocket thrust. So you, you're actually getting more bang for your buck, if I can put it that way. Um, and that's something that's very difficult to quantify theoretically. And so an experiment like this is a great way of measuring yeah. what will happen. And are we sure that there's not going to be any fallout from this bump that could be problematic? It's 11 million kilometres away at its very nearest and the the debris that would fall out will actually continue probably orbiting uh, the, the bigger asteroid, Didymos itself. Uh, so I think you can take the astronomer at large's guarantee <laughs> that this is not going to contribute to space jump for what it's worth. Um, it's it's uh, really a situation where everything is gravitationally bound to that larger asteroid. That is a relief for it to hear. OK, so... Um, tell us a little bit more about this planetary defence strategy because, of course, this is fine because it's so far away, but what if it were closer? How quickly could we marshal another spacecraft to do the same thing if it was a lot closer to us? Yeah, so the good news is that, um, you know, the Earth is festooned with large telescopes uh, whose job is at least in part to look for these potentially hazardous asteroids. And the, the, the crucial thing here is to find something that could hit the Earth, but find it as early as possible so that you've got a long period of time, uh, you know, maybe a decade or 20 years or something of that sort, which not only gives you time to mount uh, 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 some sort of redirection experiment, a bit like the one we're, we're looking at now. But also, the earlier you get it, the less 
of a nudge you have to give to an asteroid to make its trajectory change down the track so that it will miss the Earth. So that whole strategy is based on searching for these things. And actually, the world's telescopes are, are being very good at that. And one final bit of good news, Bev, is that the bigger the object is, which makes it more dangerous, but the bigger the object, the, the easier it is to find, because the bigger ones are easier to spot than the smaller ones. Yes, you make a good point, Fred. So is this the first of many sort of missions like this, do you think? I think it will be the first of a number, yes, because it's really the, the, the most, perhaps the most direct attempt to see what will happen if we, if we do hit an asteroid with uh, something else. Uh, other possibilities like exploding a nuclear bomb nearby have got all kinds of potentially difficult consequences. This is in many ways the easiest way to do it. And if it works, that will be uh, you know, a, a kind of prototype for developing methods. NASA will almost certainly be involved in this uh, for moving asteroid orbits almost routinely, which will be very, very reassuring for the rest of us. <laughs> you will help us sleep easily tonight, Fred. <laughs> Thank you as always. Great to have you on. Great, great pleasure, Beth. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.